Hi guys, I'm Takara. Welcome back to my channel. As you guys saw in the title, I am going to be sharing with you guys my top 10 ish <laughs> most unique fragrances in my collection and i say ish because i think i have like 11 but i figured you guys wouldn't mind if i shared an extra one with you guys of course this is just in my opinion of what i consider to be unique you may or may not agree and that's perfectly okay fragrance is subjective but i was tagged to do this video by my boo manahil here on youtube if you guys aren't subscribed I don't know what you're doing. She gives the best descriptions of fragrances. She's so detailed and then the way she describes them just draws you in and makes you wanna buy them. I'll leave her information down in the description box for you guys to go check her out and make sure you subscribe while you're there. You won't be disappointed. As usual, this won't be in any particular order. I'm just gonna be grabbing the fragrance and talking about them. Besides my scent of the day, cause you guys know I always share that with you guys first. So of course, as usual, leave your scent of the day down in the comments cause I love hearing what you guys are wearing and be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because it really helps my channel out and with that being said let's go ahead and jump into the list and my scent of the day is pure excess by paco Rabanne. here's what the bottle looks like i know it gets a lot of hate because of the snake i actually kind of like it and it's weird because i don't even like snakes myself <laughs> i'm scared of them in real life but i think it's kind of Cool. Of course it's Gotti. You guys know I love Gotti bottles, so probably ain't very surprising that I actually like the bottle. So this fragrance is unique to me because it has a popcorn note in it and it's also sweet. So I think it effectively combines savory and sweet components which I think is also pretty unique. You have salty and you have sweet, and it actually, in my opinion, it works in this fragrance. So to me, the popcorn note in this smells like kettle corn. If you've had kettle corn before, you know it's kind of sweet. It smells like buttered kettle corn, in my opinion, like a lightly salted buttered kettle corn. And I get that in the initial spray. I smell the popcorn notes. And if I am to sniff the areas where I sprayed it on my skin, I can smell the popcorn note. But after the opening, I can't really smell the popcorn note strongly projecting off of my skin. After that, I get mostly what I believe to be the ylang ylang. And it's like a tart, fruity, sweet candy-like scent. And it also has a bit of creaminess to it, I believe to be from the vanilla note. And then still throughout the entire wear of the fragrance, I do still get that savory, buttered kettle corn scent but it's more so in the background of the fragrance and it kind of just helps to cut the sweetness in my opinion of the fragrance i have seen this fragrance compared to paco Rabanne olympia i don't think i've ever mentioned that on my channel but i have tried that fragrance and it's not my favorite i like the scent of olympia but when i wear it it makes me a bit nauseous so i can't wear it the only similarities i see to this fragrance and olympia is that savory note between the two fragrances olympia has a salt note in it and i feel like the salt note that was used in olympia was used in this fragrance to help create that popcorn note that is in this fragrance I much prefer this one because it doesn't make me nauseous when I wear it. And I really enjoy this fragrance. So yeah, again, that is Paco Rabanne Pure Excess. So this next fragrance is one that you guys have seen on my channel and you guys know that I love. This is Burberry Her Intense. And like I've said previously, this smells like sweet syrupy berries and it has like a medicinal vanilla scent to it. And that combination in general, I feel smells very unique. It's not something that you smell a lot in different fragrances. I've never smelled anything that smelled like this. So that in itself makes it unique to me. And this is a fragrance that seems to be a love or hate. Like I've said previously, some people think it smells like cough syrup. I can see that because like I said, the benzoin in this fragrance gives it like this medicinal vanilla scent. And that in combination with the syrupy berry scent, it could be like a berry flavored cough syrup type of scent. But I think it works in this fragrance, at least on my skin, I think it smells really nice. Yeah, again, that is Burberry Heart Intense. So this next fragrance is one you guys haven't seen on my channel yet, but I love it. This is Dolce & Gabbana, The Only One Intense in this sexy black bottle. <laughs> 
So the reason I find this fragrance unique is because to my nose, it smells like a floral gourmand type of fragrance. And <laughs> I consider that term in general to be somewhat of an oxymoron because gourmand fragrances, as I've told you guys previously, are fragrances that smell edible. And when I think edible, I don't think floral. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So yeah, it combines both of those components and I think it does so very effectively. When I first sprayed this fragrance, it kind of reminded me of Classic Essence de Parfum by Jean-Paul Gaultier, if you smell that. And also Alien Fusion by Mugler, if you smell that one. I think both of those fragrances kind of smell a bit similar. To me, the most prominent notes in this fragrance are the coconut and the dark vanilla. and to me, in combination, the dark vanilla note kind of gives the coconut note like a like a toasted coconut vibe. I feel like the vanilla notes also just adds a bit of sweet creaminess to the fragrance. And I do smell florals in this fragrance, but I think it's a bit more gourmand than it is floral on my skin personally. It does have a neroli note and I do smell that. And to me, if you guys have smelled Dolce Garden by Dolce & Gabbana, um, it has a coconut note and a neroli note in it as well and to me it smells like this fragrance has those same coconut and neroli notes that were used in that fragrance because it smells very similar i believe paulina char said that she smelled similarities to dolce and gabbana dolce garden and i think those two notes specifically are what i'm smelling from that particular fragrance and the neroli notes just adds like a citrusy floral aspect to the fragrance in my opinion and there's some freshness to this as well from that orange blossom note that is in this. And there's also a bit of spiciness in this fragrance. I don't know what's giving me that spiciness, but I think that's what's making it smell similar to the Alien Fusion and the Classic Essence de Parfum because those two fragrances have a prominent orange blossom note and there's a bit of spiciness to those fragrances as well. So I think that's why I got that similarity when I first sprayed it. And yeah, I love this fragrance. So yeah, again, that is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. So the next fragrance I have here is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Scandal by Night. Here's what the bottle looks like. I love the legs. <laughs> looks scandalous. <laughs> so this is a strong one. If you guys have smelled any of the scandals, well, I've only smelled two, but the two I've smelled, the original and this one, they are intense. This one projects like crazy. Now, the reason this one is in this video is because for one, it's very intense, like I said. It literally like, it doesn't take a whole lot at all. A few sprays and this is filling a room. And also to me, this smells a bit skanky, if that makes sense. Like not in a bad way, but it smells like enticing, but also inappropriate, but it still smells delicious as well. Like this smells very dessert-like to me. The honey in this is like a, a syrupy, thick, sweet, sticky honey notes in my opinion. And I do get the cherry note in this, but it's not super prominent. It kind of just adds like a slight fruity element to the fragrance. And then I also smell the tuberose pretty prominently. And the tuberose in this smells to me like that creamy, buttery tuberose scent. And a tuberose I think in this smells a bit animalic. And I think that's what's making it smell a bit skanky to me. Maybe the tuberose in combination with the musk. Maybe the musk smells a bit animalic as well. Like almost like skin-like. Like maybe like slightly sweaty skin. Not that it smells like B.O. or anything, but it smells Sexy, like Can said, Clean Cans, my girl here on YouTube, she said it smells sexy and emphasis on sex, <laughs> if you get what I'm saying. I love this fragrance, very unique for those reasons in my opinion. And yeah, again, that is Scandal by Night by Jean-Paul Gaultier. So the next fragrance I have here is Jean-Paul Gaultier, La Belle. And look how pretty this bottle is love. So I find this fragrance to be unique because of the scent and also because of the fact that it only has three notes and the three notes that are in this are green pear at the top, the mid is bergamot and the base is vanilla pod and these are straight from the JPG website. I know Fragrantica has better ver listed in the notes but that's not on their website so I don't know where it came from but to me this fragrance starts off smelling like a uh, tart 
green pear mixed with this earthy vanilla scent and the vanilla scent in the beginning kind of reminds me a bit of like a like sweet tobacco type of scent. I don't know if other people get that or not, but the first time I sprayed this fragrance, I immediately thought it smelled like sweet tobacco. So that's what I get in the opening, but as it settles on my skin, the pear gets more juicy and it smells like it's more of a ripe, like sweet, juicy pear. And it starts to smell more like dessert-like, like the vanilla starts smelling a bit sweeter and more like maybe like a vanilla custard type of scent. Together with the pear, it just smells so delicious. And I think the bergamot note is giving it like just a slight bit of spice. I don't smell any citrus in this fragrance. And to me, bergamot can tend to smell like a spicy citrus note. So it's like a spiced, sweet pear and vanilla custard like dessert in the dry down. And it smells very delicious. The dry down is my favorite. So the fact that those three notes can give me all of that in itself makes this fragrance unique to me. And I love it. Again, that is Jean Paul Gaultier LaBelle. So this next fragrance y'all should be expecting to see in this list based off of how I have described it previously. This is Hot Couture Eau de Toilette by Givenchy. And as I described previously, it smells like sweet, ripe strawberries and raspberries and cigarette ashes to me. I think it's a spices note in this, but as I've mentioned, the spices note in this smells like cigarette ashes to me. And like I said previously, I don't think that's how it smells to other people. Like if you were to be wearing this fragrance, I don't think anybody would smell you and be like, she smells like sweet, fruity cigarette ashes. I feel like it's probably one that just smells like sweet, spiced fruits in the scent that it projects to others. So yeah, again, that is Givenchy Hot Couture Eau de Toilette. So the next fragrance I have here is Angel Muse Eau de Toilette by Mugler. And as I mentioned previously, this fragrance smells to me like passion fruit dipped in milk chocolate on a bed of patchouli. That's literally what I get. And like I said, the patchouli in this is that dirty, wet soil patchouli. So based on my description, I'm sure you guys see why it's in this video. I would never think that like a passion fruit and chocolate notes would smell good together in general. Passion fruit to me as a note kind of just smells like this bright, fresh, fruity, almost soapy type of note in a fragrance. And it's pretty prominent in this fragrance to my nose, especially initially, it kind of smells a bit sharp. Um, it might be off-putting to some, but I think it really works well in this fragrance. And yeah, like I was saying, that with chocolate doesn't seem like it would go well. And then you have that wet soil patchouli in the mix as well, but it works and yeah, I love it. Again, that is Angel Muse Eau de Toilette by Mugler. So the next fragrance I have here is Valentino Donna, Born in Roma. Love this bottle as well. And the reason I have it in here is because this to me smells like a fruity, woody gourmand fragrance. To me, this is tart and fruity from that black currant note. And then it has this sweet creaminess from that vanilla note that's in this. And then there's this smoky, woody aspect from that guayac wood note. And the smoky woods in this fragrance reminds me of the smoky woodiness that you get in By the Fireplace by Mason Margiela. I really enjoy it. And again, that is Valentino Donna, Born in Roma. So this next fragrance is one that you guys know that I love. This is Marc Jacobs Decadence. And if you guys have smelled this before, you know it smells unique. <laughs> to me, this fragrance smells like a sweet, ripe plum with some smoky woodiness, and then it has this greenness to it as well. And I feel like the fact that it combines those three elements makes it unique. Again, kind of like with the Mugler, you're taking notes that you probably wouldn't think would work, putting them together, and it actually works, at least in my opinion. I love this fragrance. I know some people don't like it. I think it's one of those fragrances that is a love or hate, so if you're interested and you haven't tried it, you might want to sample it first. For me, this was a love at first sniff. I did sample it first because I was scared because of what everybody was saying, but I sprayed it and immediately loved it. I'm like, I should have just bought the bottle. But anyway, that is Marc Jacobs Decadence. So this next fragrance, I don't have the actual bottle of, so I'll put a picture of it on the screen. I had a refill bottle and I decanted it into this 
little bottle here but this is the fragrance i mentioned on my channel before previously it was actually in my blind by regrets video <laughs> but that does not make it any less unique this is alien essence absolute by thierry mugler and this is a fragrance that gives me a bit of an issue i don't dislike it like i said previously i like the dry down but the opening is pretty intense to me this fragrance does have that alien dna i love alien the original but it has that jasmine note that's an alien and you know i don't know if you guys get this or not but the jasmine note in alien can smell a bit menthol like to my nose and an alien is just in the opening for me but once it dries on my skin it settles and it's not as prominent and that's why i'm able to enjoy the fragrance with this one i think it's actually if i'm not mistaken i believe this is the eau de parfum intense which makes sense as to why i'm about to say this but the jasmine note in this is amplified in my opinion and in the opening and through the mid as well i say for a good like two hours that jasmine note is very strong in this on my skin and it's very menthol heavy to my nose and it prevents me from being able to enjoy this fragrance as much as i'd like but i think that's what makes it unique the fact that it has that very strong in your face menthol scent that a lot of people love actually most people love this fragrance i'm one of the few that doesn't i think i would enjoy it a lot more if that menthol note wasn't there but to me the menthol note in this kind of reminds me a bit of vix vapor rub or like like Bengay, if you guys have smelled either of those. Please don't get offended by what I'm saying about this fragrance. Like I said, I do like it. I just could do without that part of the fragrance. And then you have that strong vanilla note in this as well. So it's like alien with that intensified jasmine note, very mentholated and then a pure vanilla extract, not imitation, like the real thing, but it's sweet. Or you still get that jasmine note in the dry down, but it's more subtle and the vanilla note starts to shine more and becomes more prominent in the fragrance. So yeah, that is Alien Essence Absolute by Mugler. So the next fragrance I have here is Burberry Brit For Her by Burberry. And I think the note combination in this fragrance just creates and overall unique scent. To me, I get citrus from that lime note and it does smell specifically like lime. That is the citrus note that I smell in this fragrance. There's a crisp pear note in this as well. It smells like a green pear to my nose. And then I do get the vanilla, but it's like a dry vanilla. And it does have an almond note as well in this fragrance that I do smell. And it's also, I get a bit of powderiness in this. And I think that may be like a tonka bean note or something. I'm not sure if it has a tonka bean note in this or not, but that's what I get. And there is some sweetness to this. It has a sugar note, I believe. So I think it is that sugar note. And it also has this masculine scent to it. Even though this is a women's fragrance, to me, this smells more masculine. This smells like a men's fragrance, in my opinion. People can wear whatever they want when they want to, but this smells more masculine leaning than it does feminine. I don't think it smells feminine at all, actually. It has a mahogany woods note and i've noticed that when that note is in a fragrance it tends to pull masculine at least to my nose and on my skin it's like a masculine woody note and it's pretty prominent in this fragrance and i think it works everything that i mentioned all together i feel like that works and to me this fragrance is pretty linear so it stays the same way from the beginning to the dry down and just becomes more warm and cozy and soft as it settles. I do prefer it when it starts to dry down though. Since it's more masculine, I prefer it when it's softer and not projecting as much personally. And again, that is Burberry Brit for her. Okay guys, that was the last fragrance that I had to share with you guys. I am going to be tagging some people that I want to see do this tag. I do not have anybody written down to tag, so I'm trying to scroll through my subscriptions to see who I want to tag to do this. I'm trying to tag some people that Manahil did not tag. I can't remember specifically who she tagged and who she did not tag, but I'm going to tag Gabby Loves Perfumes, Amanda Coco Cabana, Pika Fragrance Reviews, Karina Waldron. I don't know if Karina even watches my videos, but I'm gonna tag her anyway because I'd love to see her pics. Mandy Glam and Rhonda Larice. I don't know if Rhonda watches me either, but I'd love to see you guys do this video. Of course, don't feel obligated to do it if you don't have time or your schedule doesn't permit or you just don't want to. I'd love to see you do it, but you don't have to, of course. You know, that's a given. That is it, you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, drop down below your most unique fragrance in your collection, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.